This video was brought to you by Ground News. This is the largest failure of an American bank since the 2008 financial crisis, and it seems to have got politicians and policymakers quite worried. We are, of course, talking about the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank, known as SVB. The bank, founded in 1983, was, as the name suggests, a bank that catered to Silicon Valley, specializing in tech startups and growing to become a true behemoth of the financial industry, with over 209 billion US dollars worth of assets by the end of 2022. But the question is, where did it all go wrong? And is there more to come? At its core, SVB suffered a good old-fashioned run on the bank. But before we get into that, we need to take a look at the ticking time bomb that ultimately caused SVB's collapse. A collapse that, to paraphrase Ernest Hemingway, came about two ways. Gradually, then suddenly. Now, inflation globally is on the rise at the moment. The combination of a rebound after COVID lockdowns and the war in Ukraine has generally pushed up prices across the board. Now, to combat rising inflation, central banks have reached for the main lever they have, interest rates. The problem is that while higher interest rates might cool down the economy, they present quite a few challenges for banks, especially smaller ones. That's because many would argue that banks and businesses have got used to cheap credit. Cheap credit that could and would be used to fund significant expansion in tech startups. After all, if a bank is lending you money at a rate of 2% and you believe that you can grow your business to get a return of 15 or 20%, then borrowing that money is a no-brainer. But hike that interest rate to 6% and drop that return in a poor economy to 7 and that risk might no longer look worth it. Now, none of this is necessarily a problem if savers, i.e. depositors, are happy to leave their money with your bank. You can just charge the companies you're lending money to slightly more and the whole thing balances out. The problem is, though, if savers aren't happy and start to pull their money out of your bank, which is exactly what happened to SVB. Higher and higher interest rates have ultimately hit tech stocks hard. So even behemoths like Amazon, Apple and Alphabet, Google's parent company, have suffered significantly in recent months. So with private funding beginning to dry up, many SVB depositors, including these huge tech companies, have started pulling their money out of the bank in order to shore up their liquidity in the short term. Now, this isn't good for SVB because it leaves them with a lot less money to play with. But the picture gets even more complicated when you consider the assets that SVB hold, long-dated government bonds. Now, we don't have the time to get into the intricacies of bond price dynamics in this video, but the key thing you need to know is that the price or value of a bond is inversely related to interest rates. So, as interest rates rise, bond prices fall, and vice versa. So, as recent months have seen interest rates rise, the value of SVB's bond portfolio has conversely been falling. Now, this has all been going on behind the scenes for a while now. Depositors have been removing their money from the bank in order to shore up their liquidity, and the value of SVB's assets has been tanking. But the real panic began on Wednesday, when SVB announced that it had sold parts of its bond portfolio at a $1.8 billion loss in order to cover redemptions. Now, I don't need to tell you that a bank selling their assets at a $1.8 billion loss isn't a sign of long-term security. And very quickly, things began to go downhill from here, because on Thursday, SVB announced that they would have to sell another $2.25 in equity and stock in order to cover a funding hole. At this point, a bank run had well and truly begun. 
Clients and depositors began quickly pulling their money from the bank, fearing that it was about to collapse. And in doing so, this forced SVB to raise even more capital to cover the gap, which made the situation 10 times worse. According to Reuters, venture capital firms such as Future Fund, run by Peter Thiel, a co-founder of PayPal, even began advising SVB clients to walk away from the bank, a move that caused the stock sale to collapse. From this point onwards, SVB was essentially doomed. And by Friday morning, trading of SVB shares had halted, with California's Department of Financial Protection and Innovation proceeding to shut down the bank and appointing the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, known as the FDIC, as receiver. Now, ultimately, bank runs are nothing new. If you cast your mind back to 2007, one of the first signs that something was horribly amiss in the financial industry was a run on the bank at Northern Rock here in the UK, a bank who had approached the Bank of England for liquidity support, something that led to panic among the public, and this panic led to a bank run. Ultimately, this kind of thing quickly becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy, because as depositors rush to withdraw their money, they are, by that very act, making the situation worse, which encourages other depositors to panic and do the same thing. So, back in 2007, knowing that this dynamic could take hold, governments across the world established deposit insurance schemes, the most notable being the already discussed FDIC in the United States, and the Financial Services Compensation Scheme, or FSCS, here in the UK. As the name suggests, a deposit insurance scheme protects or insures a set level of deposits held by you or I in a bank. In the States, that's up to $250,000, while in the UK, it's £85,000. So, if a bank collapses and they're a member of one of these schemes, the scheme will ensure that you can get your money back up to those levels. Crucially though, any money held above these limits is not insured which is where the SVB case gets super interesting. Now, SVB was a member bank of the FDIC, meaning the deposits up to a quarter of a million dollars were insured. The issue is those uninsured deposits though, because 96% of SVB customers are said to have balances above the quarter million insured threshold. Balances which they could stand to lose. Something which clearly terrified tech startups and started to overflow into the rest of the banking industry. However, late on Sunday, the US Treasury, Federal Reserve, and FDIC issued a joint statement saying that the FDIC would protect all depositors, not just insured ones, as well as establishing an additional fund for eligible depository institutions, to try and smooth over liquidity concerns in the market as a whole. And it does seem to have worked, calming the market about fears of further bank runs. But it's also introduced some uncertainty about the stability of smaller regional banks. So, the full might of the US state has stepped in. Job done. Mission accomplished. Well, not quite. While a full-scale financial crisis akin to 2008 hasn't materialized yet, Many, not just in the US, are concerned about the hidden risks that are presented in the banking sector. After all, very few people, if anyone, were predicting SVB's collapse at the start of this month. And as such, fears of contagion are already impacting other banks in spite of the new fund. As this very script was being written, the cost of insuring Credit Suisse bonds against default, known as credit default swaps, jumped to their highest level on record, all while their stock fell by 15%. Similarly, shares in First Republic Bank dropped by a record 67% at the open, before trading was halted. Beyond that, it's clear that in the States at least, policymakers have been spooked too, with it now looking less and less likely that the Fed will continue jacking up interest rates with the same bravado as before lest they cause more banks to fail. Ultimately, no one knows how governments and central banks around the world will react next, or if this is an isolated incident. But if you want to stay on top of things, then the best place to do so is with ground news. 
Now, we all know that algorithms work behind the scenes to determine the information that we see online. So Ground News was created to give you access to as many diverse perspectives as possible. That makes Ground News a website and app which can help you actively burst your media bubble. It lets you compare how breaking news stories are being covered across the political spectrum. For every news story, you can see the number of sources reporting, as well as the political bias of those sources. And that's important, because the same story can take on a totally different meaning, depending on how it's being framed. And this becomes really clear when you use their blind spot feature, a news feed dedicated to the stories that are disproportionately covered by one side of the political spectrum. Here, you might discover information that challenges your perspective, or simply helps you understand someone else's media reality. You can even keep track of your personal daily reading habits with a personalized dashboard that shows you tons of stats about where the news you're reading is really coming from. And that makes it a really fascinating way to read the news, and quite unlike any other news app out there. And to give it a try, you should head over to ground.news forward slash TLDR. There you can subscribe to get unlimited access to all of their features and support an independent news platform working to make the media landscape more transparent.